All right, we are only talking about one thing in this video, and that is how to measure the swing weight of a golf club. So let's go. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm here in the EFG build shop, and this video is in response to a lot of the build videos that I do because I sort of try to edit them down, keep them at a reasonable length, and so I kind of have to cut some things out of the process just for timing purposes. But because of that, inevitably, the majority of questions that I get seem to be about how I swing weight a golf club or a set of golf clubs. So because of that, this video is going to be solely dedicated Okay, first off, we're gonna swing weight a golf club that we are putting together as part of a set of irons. So we wanna make sure that the swing weight is where we want it to be and that the progression of all the swing weights is nice and even. So we've got a head, we've got a shaft that has been prepped already. So the tip's prepped and it's been cut to the final length. So it will give us the accurate swing weight measurement. If you do this with a raw shaft, Swing weight will be way off, it'll be way too heavy, so it has to be cut to the final length. And finally, we've got the grip that we're going to use. Remember, different grip weights will change the swing weight, so you wanna either use the exact grip that you're gonna be using, or use a standing grip that is the same weight as what you're gonna be using. Okay, two ways to dry fit a golf club for swing weight, and I've shown both of these methods before. The first one involves, let's say you have a 50 gram grip that you're gonna use. Well, I have, that I keep here, a grip that has already been cut off of a club. Same grip as what I'm gonna be using. More importantly, it's the same weight. Both of these are 50 grams. So I can use this grip and wrap it over the shaft to get my swing weight. If you're gonna use this method, what can happen if you just put this grip directly over the shaft this shaft, the very tip of it, is very sharp, right? Where you cut it and it's just the metal sitting there. And what can happen over time, if you put this on just like this and slide the shaft up to the end of the grip, the shaft will start cutting into the grip and actually start cutting deeper and deeper. And if you do this more and more times, all of a sudden, this grip is gonna keep sliding down further than it should naturally sit if it's a new grip because it's slowly being cut by the shaft. So if you're gonna use this method with a split grip, what you wanna do is get a little piece of masking tape, put it over the top, over the end of the shaft, just like that. And now, we're gonna wrap that grip over the end of it and the masking tape completely covering the end will keep it from sliding too far on in case it's already been cut, or if it hasn't been cut, it'll keep it from getting cut. So at this point, we've got this on, we've got it slid all the way to the end of the grip. We'll slide the head onto the shaft. Make sure you're always supporting the head because if we haven't glued it on, we don't want it to fall off onto the ground. And now we'll set it up in the scale resting just like this. Make sure the back butt end of the grip is all the way to the end of this stop. And now we're just going to adjust it till we get our swing weight so that we zero out right here on this point or come close to zeroing out. So basically this combination right now is at C, call it C8.5, C8 and a half. Now if you don't have a split grip like this or maybe you're using a grip that's a different weight, maybe you're using a midsize or something that's a heavier grip, and so you don't have a split grip that you can use as a stand-in, well then, in that case, we can do the other method that I use, which is just taking the actual grip we're gonna be using, or one of the actual grips, and putting a rubber band around it to hold it onto the end of the shaft. Now when we do this, important point, make sure that the grip is sticking out past the end of the shaft to mirror how it will actually be when you install it because when you install the shaft inside the grip it doesn't go all the way to the end remember it has a little bit of just solid rubber here so it stays a little short like that about a quarter inch okay at this point we do the same thing we take the head again remember to support the head so it doesn't fall off on the ground we're going to put it 
into the scale again. Now the only difference this time, whereas the first time we put the shaft in and the butt end of the grip sat all the way against this back stop. Here, because we don't have the grip on the shaft, we want to sort of mimic that. So see right there, we have a little space, basically about a quarter of an inch space between the end of the shaft and the back stop of the scale. So there's a quarter inch space there, but the end of the grip on top here is even with that back stop. And that way it sort of mirrors what you're getting when you actually install the grip. Now at this point, we'll go ahead, see what we get here. As you can see, it changes it just a little bit, makes it about, in this case, it's about a half point lighter when we do it this way here, now we get a swing weight of about C point, excuse me, C8 as opposed to C8.5. So yes, in this case, we do see a very slight change, half a swing weight point between using the split grip method and using just a rubber banded grip method. But again, if you're using a heavier grip and you don't have a split grip, well, this is gonna be the next best option to still give you a very close result and most importantly, if you use the same method for everything, all the numbers will be consistent. So that's the most important. Okay, here's tip number one. If you're doing a whole set of irons, you only need to actually use the grip either in a split grip form or rubber banded onto the shaft one time. That's all we need because at that point, we can streamline the process, we can speed everything up. Let me show you what we're gonna do. So now that we know that the full dry weighted swing weight is C8.5, for the sake of speed, so we don't have to keep going through this process of attaching the grip and taking it off again, we can do a separate swing weight measurement, same club, just with the head and the shaft. And in this case, we're just gonna go ahead, put the shaft in the swing weight scale with the head on it, and just extend the shaft all the way so it sits up against the back of the swing weight scale. Obviously, we have a lot less weight on this side now, so the swing weight's going to be much heavier. So here we can see without any grip, our swing weight comes out to D7. So if we're trying to match everything up and see exactly where everything is, or just to get our initial swing weights to see how much weight we need to add, we can use this number, D7, which we know translates into C8.5 once we have a grip on it. Now that means I can take this club off, I can grab a seven iron in this case, put it on, again, no grip, up against the backstop of the scale, and measure it, again with no grip, and see, in this case, this one looks just a little bit heavier, Call that about, about D7.5. So now we know if this is D7.5 without a grip, we look back at what we just did and we can say that with a grip, this is gonna come out to C9, basically. So let's say now, just for example, that this seven iron was three swing weight points lighter than what I am ideally wanting it to be. So that being the case, we're just gonna use some little tip weights that look like this. They can come in a lead form or in a brass form, these are brass. And all we do is slide this down in here, put the head back on, and now if we take a swing weight, again, we have the grip on here for this one. We should now see a swing weight if we were previously at about C9.5, we would expect to now be just about D2 or fractionally under D2. And that's basically what we see right there. Now, last thing I wanna cover in this video is, well, what happens if you don't own a swing weight scale or you don't have access to a swing weight scale. And luckily, and I've done a video with this topic, but it's pretty old, so you may or may not be able to find it way back in the archives of Mobile Club Maker. But there are numerous online swing weight calculators 
that will allow you to take a golf club, either a finished golf club, or you can also do this in a dry fit type of setup and get the swing weight without actually needing a swing weight scale. Now, if you are gonna do this with a dry fit golf club, one, I would recommend that you either attach the head or make sure that the head is on the shaft held in place a little better. You can do that with like a piece of fishing line that you run over the top of the shaft and stick the head on and that'll sort of hold it in place temporarily just in case when you're moving things around it doesn't fall off. If you don't want to do that just be careful maybe do this on carpeting or outside in the grass so that if it falls on the ground it doesn't damage the head. The other thing I would say is if you're going to use this online uh, swing weight calculator with a dry fit I would definitely use the split grip method it just is going to be much easier and you want to be pretty darn accurate when you're taking these measurements so the split grip just makes it a little easier to get the right length measurement that we're going to do. Now for me to show you this I'm just going to use a fully put together club that's not going to have the head fall off the grips already on there no problem. We went ahead took a swing weight measurement of this club it is D4 as it sits with this head shaft and grip combination. Now there are a couple different online swing weight calculators you can use. I will leave a link to one or two of them down in the description of this video. But for this video, I decided I'm gonna try and find an app, right? There's an app for everything. Let's see if we can find an app for swing weight calculations. So went onto the app store and typed in golf swing weight calculator. And surprisingly, only one came up, but we only need one. Golf swing weight calculator by Barford Golf. Went ahead, downloaded that. So I think most all these swing weight calculators use the same basic equation to figure this out. So they all essentially ask for the same two measurements. The first one being it needs a static weight measurement of the golf club. That being just a total weight as it sits. How much does it weigh? The second measurement it needs is a balance point measurement or a measurement of how far the balance point of this golf club is from the grip. All that means is Put your finger out, at least in a rough estimate, and figure out where the shaft balances perfectly parallel to the ground. Now, I will just tell you, with any of these online, any of these app swing weight calculators, you want to be extremely accurate with where that balance point is. What I found works well is I've got this little three-sided file, and I use that to actually put rest the golf club on and find the balance point exactly where it sits. Now I've got a dry erase marker that I'm just going to go ahead and put a little line exactly where this is because that is exactly where we want to measure. Now we just get a tape measure and measure from the very end of the grip to that line that we just made. So that's 734 millimeters. Let's put that into the calculator and see what we get. So the total weight was 420 and the balance point in millimeters was 734. We calculate the swing weight and we get right there at the bottom D4.1. Hey, make sure you go down below, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you'll be alerted when I post new videos. Make sure you check out my other channel, Elite Fit Golf, where we do equipment reviews and fitting videos. If you want to find me on Instagram, you can find me, of course, at Mobile Club Maker, and I'll see you next time. Bye.